Oh shit. So to kick off this video series again, I thought we would take a quick look. Well, frankly, some new stuff has come out. Some new shit has come to light since I last did a video. You know, we have a new version of Moto. There's a new version of ZBrush. Uh, ZBrush R8 is legit. So uh, we're going to take a look at a few of the features that can work together to make your hard surface life easier. Now, yes, I know you can do this in different ways with different apps, but this is the way that's been the most fluid for me. Uh, and that's even counting the rounded edge shader. And that's saying a lot because, you know, I love that thing like a sun. So uh, we're going to look at that workflow and we're going to talk a little bit about live booleans in ZBrush R8. Oh, oh and the widget because the widget is friggin' awesome. So yeah, let's get going. So to kick things off, I've started off with a simple, well, not a simple, but a starter shape here in Moto. There's a cylinder barrel and some shapes that want to cut out of it. Now we're going to do this over in ZBrush so I can start to demonstrate, you know, the workflow I was talking about. And so we can start talking about ZBrush. But to do that, I'm going to use the GoZ facility. A GoZ, you know, as you probably already know, sends your current mesh data to ZBrush. And that's a big part of why this workflow works. Because yeah, if I had to export to files and re-import them again, this would be slow and annoying. But using GoZ makes it quick. So if I grab these two shapes and fire them over there using GoZ, this should work. And it did. So there we are. My shapes are in ZBrush. And we're going to go ahead and talk about Booleans now. Okay, so when it comes to live Booleans, there's a couple of features I find in ZBrush that are really helpful. There's the uh, dynamic subdivisions, which are super handy. Uh, they're under your geometry tab. Sorry, not this. Um, uh, dynamic subdiv. So when you have a subtool activated, you just hit D and that activates uh, dynamic subdivisions. Now these are obviously different from regular subdivisions because these aren't real yet. Uh, and this is not new with R8. This is just uh, something that I find helps with this workflow. And I do that to both subtools. I hit them both uh, with dynamic subdivision. So they're you know, nice and smooth. Now live Boolean, this is how easy live Boolean is. So I have my two shapes over here. I'm gonna set the cutters to subtractive. Now nothing happened yet because I have to turn on live Boolean. But once I turn on live Boolean, uh, those cuts are real. And now you can do all kinds of fun magic because we're going to get into the widget. Now the real power behind these dynamic Booleans or live Booleans, I should say, is that if I turn on the widget, yeah, ZBrush has a widget now. It's super fucking sweet. But basically, if I have this subtool selected, turn on the widget, I can then drag that subtool through the mesh and it's all being done in real time. Now, now why is this hugely significant? Well, uh, basically before when you were in ZBrush, you had to use the um, uh, DynaMesh and you would DynaMesh your Boolean operands together and the resulting mesh would pop out again, which was good, but slow workflow, obviously. Uh, this allows you to iterate really quickly, see what's going on. And it's a lot like mesh fusion, but it's also uh, not a lot like mesh fusion. So let's do a couple of cool things that are new with R8. So let's say that I decide that I've got this shape, but what I really like to do is to have that, this front part right here kind of, kind of bow out. Well, in R8, uh, with the widget selected, uh, if I hit this little wheel up here, uh, we can apply uh, deformers and various kinds of modifiers to the mesh. So if I add a deformer and I select uh, these control points right here and use the widget to pull them out, see that's, that's a lattice cage. So now with that lattice cage, I've pulled that front part out. I'm like, oh, well, actually, hold on. Now, what I wanted to do was actually draw, the, actually only pull the middle part here. 
do that, do that. Now pull it out. Okay. Now just the middle is getting pulled out you know, and getting a nice you know, round bow on it, which is pretty cool. Now what's actually very neat now is that if I go back to the widget and I do some other work, I come over here and I feel that I have to readjust the positions of these now because of that bowing and all that. Going back to this, that deformer is still active. So until I hit accept, that deformer will stay live. So if I go back into it, you know, I can edit the points. So it's not quite a modifier stack, but it is handier than just baking everything in real time. Uh, when you are ready to bake it, you just go back in there and hit accept, and that makes the deformer stick around for real. So turning back on my dynamic subdivs. Now let's say uh, you want to add some additional shapes to this Boolean operation. So when it comes time to, to add additional shapes to your Boolean list, there's, there's two quick ways to do it. Uh, the first way is, is the traditional way. If I say append, I append a polymesh 3D, that gives me the star. And I can now, once I select the star and maybe scale it down a bit, that star is now a subtool on its own and I can you know, give it a Boolean operation of its own. Or new with R8, uh, if I click this little gear up here, these primitives along the top are uh, rapid change primitives. So I can like choose one of these and that'll replace that with this new thing. So if I don't want the star and I want a spear, I just pick a spear. And I say, you know, I'll turn on my dynamic subdivs, move it into position where I want it to be. You know, as you can see, the widget is already paid off in space because this is something that would have taken me you know, a lot of annoying clicks before you, uh, using the transpose line. You know, and that may be a weakness of mine, but God, I've always hated those transpose lines. <laughs> so, and here's a little trick we can do. We'll just leave that, leave that spear there. Uh, we'll do a duplicate of the sphere. We'll grab the first one, make it subtractive. Grab the second one, scale it down a little bit so it's kind of like it's got a little pocket that it sits in now. Nice. So uh, to get that cut coming off the back we talked about, we will use a different method of, of generating primitives. And this is basically just hold the control key down and drag your subtool. Now that duplicates the subtool within itself, right? So this sphere here you see now has changed. There's two spheres now that are in this in this list, and that's handy for grouping things that do the same thing. Like if you want multiple subtractives, you can have them all jammed into one subtool, or you can create new geometry like this. So I'm like, well, I don't want a sphere here. What I want now is a polycube, and I'm going to. Uh, use the handy dandy little tools here to add, uh, to add some density to this, just so it retains its shape a little more. And then I'm going to hop over to split and tell it to split that mesh out to parts because I don't want them both in the same sub, sub tool. This one, okay, reset the widget, set it to subtractive, and pull it in here. Scale it up. We'll scale it out. Down. Actually, is this a cooler idea? No, we'll just stick with the original plan. Okay, push it up, rotate it, move it down, and kind of put it into position. There, that gives us you know kind of an interesting looking shape that we want to send back over to Moto, right? Which we will do <laughs> right now. And because I'm weird and I couldn't resist, I went ahead and I added just a little more detail to this. You know, I threw a bunch, you know, a bunch more primitives at it, and just you know, expanded my Boolean tree up a little bit here. You can see though that it's all still basically just simple primitives. Right? There's a cube, there's a ring, there's a sphere, and they're just they're added and subtracted and and merged in different ways. So now, say you want to send this back to Moto, well. Uh, we can't send it back like this because this is a live boolean so we need to convert this into a real mesh first so the way that we end up doing that 
is just going into the Boolean category here. Turn on uh, the DS div box. That means that we're if we're telling ZBrush that we're using dynamic subdivisions. So it knows that it has to bake that in when it does it. And just hit the make Boolean mesh. Scroll back up here. You'll see that we now have this merged mesh that represents all the shapes that we did. And it's basically ready to go. Except it's not though, is it? Because uh, the edges are sharp and there's no way of, of fixing that in Moto really. You could use the rounded edge shader, but there's a, there's a cleaner way within ZBrush. And that cleaner way uh, involves a couple of steps. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our DynaMesh resolution up to about 500 or whatever, just something high, and turn off Blur and just hit it with DynaMesh. Well, in that case, it didn't work out so well. So let's try 1,000, maybe even higher. Let's jack it up to 2,000. OK, that seems better. You know, it all depends on the scale of your mesh and all that kind of thing. Now, if you're happy with this, you can just go with this, really, because it has rounded out a lot of this sort of uh, edge work and connections and those sorts of things. But to really pretty it up, we turn off DynaMesh and go down to the Deformation tab. In here, set Polish to like 1 and hit Enter. And that tends to just hit every hard edge with a nice little, well, polish. It gives it all that nice edging that kind of hits the light. Now there's one last step here we need to do before sending this back to Moto because I don't want to send back a mesh this heavy and luckily we don't have to. So if you've used ZBrush for, for prop work at all, uh, you probably know that I'm heading for Decimation Master and that really is the last stop on our journey. So because we can't send back a 277,000 count mesh, that's just going to be too heavy. So we're going to uh, decimate this a couple of times. I'll decimate it once. It's taken down to 55 and the geometry looks a little heavy still. So I might hit it again. So if I tell it to pre-process again and hit it again, now I'm starting to lose a little bit of the smoothness uh, and that tells me it's time to stop. Yeah, but that geo looks light enough that I can send that to Moto and you know, not feel bad about it. So uh, to do that, you know, we leverage Gozi again. I go to the top, you know, I hit my Gozi button, I'm back in Modo, and there's my mesh. Nice and, well, back. <laughs> and now that it is back, you sometimes have to you know, take a quick look at it. Uh, the smoothing doesn't always come over 100%. You can see a little jankiness happening here you know, on these faces and things. So I just, you know, hit it with the Vertex Toolkit, smooth it out, uh, that fixes everything. And that's ready for baking. You know, you can retopo this or do whatever you need to do, or just stick it into your mesh and uh, you know, use it as part of the background geo. And just to you know, get a good look at it, we could throw a matte cap on it. So say that same, same matte cap we had in ZBrush. You can see this looks pretty much exactly the same as it did in, in ZBrush. So, yeah, that's it for that technique. Like I said, it's not new and it's not something you can't do in other applications, but it's really nice and fluid to do it here. And those live Booleans are just like gold. So that's it for that. Um, I hope you found that useful. And since I kind of signed off in the previous video segment, I don't really have a good way to end this video. So please like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. And uh, I'll get back to my coffee, and I'll see you in the next video.